وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala today we're going to go into the uh, third part of our lecture, practical steps of how a person should seek knowledge. The manhajiyya, the methodology, the practical methodology in which a person should take in order to understand knowledge and to perceive it properly is as follows. Number one, point number one, the first practical step that a person needs to take in order to attain knowledge correctly and to understand it properly and to have a correct perception of it is the person has to seek knowledge gradually. Knowledge has to be sought gradually. And that is by what? And that is by the student starting with the small knowledge before he studies the large quantity, the big volumes. The person starts with what? He starts with the small knowledge. He starts with um, the little mutun, little books that the scholars mention. لذلك الله سبحانه وتعالى he said in the Quran, ولكن كونوا ربانيين. Allah says, ولكن rather كونوا بي ربانيين بي ربانيين. In Surah Al Imran, Ayah 79, Allah says in this ayah. وَلَكِنْ كُونُوا رَبَّانِيِّنَا Rather, be Rabbaniin. What does a Rabbani mean? Abdullah ibn Abbas, and he said, A Rabbani, الَّذِي يُرَبِّ النَّاسَ بِالصِّغَارِ الْعِلْمِ قَبْلَ كِبَارِهِ A Rabbani is the one who nurtures the people on small little knowledge before he takes them to the large amount. That's a Rabbani. Be a Rabbani, that's what it means. الَّذِي يُرَبِّ النَّاسَ بِالصِّغَارِ الْعِلْمِ It is the one who nurtures the people on what? بِصِغَارِ الْعِلْمِ with the little small knowledge before he talks to them about the large amount before he talks to them about the large amount of knowledge and that's what's important the student has to start small he has to take knowledge with, on bite size small amount <coughs> the person has to start with that which is what? The subjects are many. You have to start with the most important ones. So the person should start with a tawheed al aqeedah. The person shouldn't look at anything before they look at a tawheed al aqeedah. That's the first thing you need to look at. It's the first thing that you need to focus on. And then the person should move on to fiqh. But they should first focus on fiqh, fiqh al ibadat. Fiqh. Al-ibadat. Ibadat meaning tahara, and al-salah, and al-zakah, and al-sawm, and al-hajj. The person needs to focus on that. Because this is something that you need on your day-to-day -day -day basis. Fiqh al-ibadat. Then the person, when they finish fiqh al-ibadat, and they study the fiqh al-ibadat, then the person moves on to the mu'amalat. They move on to the other chapter of fiqh, which is fiqh al-mu'amalat. And they study it like that. And the person then studies all of that with a person of knowledge, a student of knowledge. The gradual steps that a person needs to take, 
We're now going to categorize, we're going to break down the gradual steps that a student of knowledge needs to take. This is called marahil tadarruj. The levels that you need to go through, or the phases that you need to go through when you're going through that gra gra gradual stage. And that's four brothers. What is it? Four stages. Four stages are the stages that are called marahil tadarruj. It's called the gradual stages. The first one is marhalatu tasis. Are we all together? Marhalatu at tasis. Marhalatu tasis. What does it mean? Marhalatu tasis means you placing a foundation for yourself. Okay, you're placing for yourself a what? You're placing for yourself a foundation, a strong foundation, a strong base is what you're making for yourself. The person starts by doing this, by taking the most important beginner books, such as the person takes Thalathatul Usul, the three fundamentals by Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. The person takes that book and they study that book. They also study the book Al-Qawa'id al arbaa And those books are written in Tawheed. Both of them. Written by Shaykh, Shaykh al-Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. The person then studies at that stage the Kitab uh, written by uh, Abu Bakr al-Ismaili rahimahullah in Aqeedah which is called I'tiqad Ahl al-Hadith person does that book. They also study Minhaj al-Salikin by Abdul Rahman Nasir al saudiyu in Fiqh. That's if they're in Hanbali. If they're a Shafi'i at that stage, they do, they study, um, they, the person studies Madhab al-Shuja'ah. The person studies at that stage, if he's a Shafi'i, he studies Madhab al-Shafi'i, he does Madhab al Shuja. If he's, if he's a Hanbali, he follows the Hanbali Madhab. At this stage, he does the Kitab Manhaj al Salikin, I mean, Manhaj al Salikin, written by Abdul Rahman Nasir al Saudi, or he does Umdat al Fiqh by Ibn Qudama. In grammar, the person does Ajrumiyyah. They study in this stage. The person studies Al Ajrumiyyah in Nahu, in grammar. The person also studies the Risala al Latifa. The Risala al Latifa written by Abdul Rahman Nasr al Saudiyu, which is written in Usul al Fiqh. Or the person might even do Al Usul min Ilm al Usul. Or the person might even do Al Waraqat. All of those three books I mentioned are all Usul al Fiqh books. The person studies those books. At that stage, the person wants to study tafsir and have an understanding of tafsir. They look at either Tafsirul Jalalain, Tafsiru, Tafsirul Jalalain, or the person looks at, or the person looks at Tafsiru Abdul Rahman Nasr al-Saudi, rahimahullah. And other than that, these this is ala sabili tamthil, just as examples. So this marhala is marhala to taqsis. The person is building the base. They are learning aham qawa'idihi. They are learning the most important principles. They're memorizing here. At this stage, they're taking everything in and they're memorizing it. Every single thing that they're studying at this stage, they are writing it down, they are noting it down. This is what they're doing. And also what they're doing at this stage is they are reading it on a shaykh who's mutqid, a shaykh who's mastered these subjects. A shaykh who has good tasawwur and a good faham of these subjects. He has a good understanding and his perception is correct, it's accurate, it's precise, it's precision. Then the person moves on to the second stage. Now then the person moves on to the second stage, which is called Marhala to Tadlil is called this stage. The second stage is called what? Marhala to Tadlil. Marhala to Tadlil is 
now you're going to study the evidences. Before, you were learning principles. You were learning uh, foundation. But you weren't learning evidences and proofs. Second stage, like in this marhalat al-tadlil, you start asking evidences. What's the evidence for this issue? It's marhalat al-tadlil. You're learning evidences for the masail, the matters. And you're memorizing the evidences. And you're also trying to understand to an, a bit, to an amount the relationship between the evidence and the thing that the evidence is used, being used for. How is the evidence being extracted, basically? To an extent, the person is trying to understand at this particular point. And at, that, at this particular point, the person studies it again with a teacher. Each level that we're mentioning, the person has to study it with a shaykh who is mutqid, who's mastered that field. This is now like a middle level. The person is in an intermediate level now. And they are studying the likes of the following books. Kitab al-Tawheed by Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. Kitab al-Tawheed by Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab. The person takes time out to study that book. The person also studies in Aqeedah, that was in Tawheed. Kitab al-Tawheed is a Tawheed book. The person then studies in Aqeedah, Al-Aqeedah al-Wasitiyah written by Shaykh al-Islam, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi rahimahullah. Then the person, if he's a Shafi'i, if the person's a, if the person's a Shafi'i, at this particular point, he does Umdatu Salik wa Umdatu Nasik, written by Ibn Naqib al Misri, rahimahullah. The person takes that on board. As for the grammar, the person at this stage, he takes on the Kitab, Mutammimatu al Ajrumiyah. He finishes off the matters that were missing from him in Ajrumiya. He finishes off here. And he also then finishes also in this stage. Qatru nada wa ballu sada written by Ibn Hisham al-Ansari rahimahullah. The person does those, those books. Also, at this particular stage, the student, if he hadn't finished al-Waraqat in the first stage, and he did Risala al-Latifa, and he chose that, then he should try to come to Al Waraqat. If he did Al Il Al Usul Min Ilm Al Usul by Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin in the first level, he should also try to come to Al Waraqat. He shouldn't try to dismiss studying the Kitab Al Waraqat by Al Imam Abi Ma'ali Al Juwaini Rahimahullah. This is the second stage, brothers. The person is now learned the evidences of some of the Masail, most important issues. He's also studied. <laughs> he has also studied the evidences he's got and he's also studied some of the sub-branches that are stemming from this uh, where they're coming together he's learning that he's learning the relationship between the dalil and the madlul the evidence and the thing that the evidence is being used for he's learning the relationship between them because kitab al-tawheed is full of what? Adilla. evidences Aqid uh, al-Wasatiyah is full of evidences. Qatr al-Nada, grammatically, it gives you evidences for its grammatical analysis. It will give you evidences. Um, and etc. The person then moves on to a third marhala, a third level. After having studied those two levels, the person moves swiftly onto a third stage. This stage is called marhala tu. It's called marhala tu al-ilm al-muqaran. It's called marhala. This stage is Al-Ilm Al-Muqaran. Al-Ilm Al-Muqaran. What does it mean Al-Ilm Al-Muqaran? It's the comparative knowledge. At this stage, the third stage, the person is learning comparative knowledge, comparative sciences. He's comparing now. This is a bit, it's the advanced level of the intermediary. You're still in marhala two, uh, you're still in, in that, uh, that stage where you haven't finished the beginning, nor have you moved on to the advanced. You're in the middle, but you're at the edge of moving from the middle to going to the advanced level. This one, you're going a bit more. You're learning it even a bit more. 
And that is by what? By learning that there's opposition on the other side. Before you didn't know there was opposition. Now you're learning there are opposing opinions out there. In Aqeedah, you're learning there are groups out there that are opposing you in the Aqeedah issues that you believe. In the Fiqh, you're learning that there are opposing views out there. You're studying them. And the way that you're doing it here is not in extreme details, but it's ala sabili al-ijmal. It's a bit still comprehensive, it's still summarized. And you're learning the most, the most accurate or the most apparent, sorry, arguments of theirs. And the way that you do this is by studying on a shaykh, who's mutqin? The kitab uh, Al-Aqeedah Al-Tadmuriyah, written by Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. The person studies Al-Aqeedah Al-Tadmuriyah by Shaykh Al-Islam uh, Ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah. And also the person at this stage, at this particular stage, the person takes the kitab uh, Minhaj written by Minhaj al Talibin written by Al Imam Abu Zakariya al Nawawi. If you're a Shafi'i, if you're a Hanbali, then you do here Hashiyat al Rawd al Murbi' ibn Qasim. And at this stage, the person does Al Fiyat ibn Malik. At this stage, the person does Al Fiyat ibn Malik in Nahu. And Usul al Fiqh at this stage, the person studies Irshad al Fuhul, written by Al Imam al Shawkani. That's what they do. Or the person does Al Ihkam lil Amidi in Usul al Fiqh. After that, the person moves on to a fourth stage, and this stage is called Marhala to Tahrir. What is it called? It's called Marhala to Tahrir. What does Marhala to Tahrir actually mean? It means the matters which are differed upon, that he learned there's khilaf on it. There are, position, there are opposing opinions out there, whether it be fiqh, whether even be aqidah related issues. What he learns here is halul ishkalat. He learns how to remove these doubts and how to respond and have the ability that when these i'tiradat and these ishkalat are brought to him, he's able to debunk them and respond to them. This is called marhalat al tahrir. The person is what? He's reached a point where he can strengthen and choose an opinion over another opinion. And he's pushing away, he's pushing away and dismissing the opposing other opinions out there. At this particular stage, the person studies the books that are written in this issue. For example, he looks into the kitab written by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. Bayanu Talbis al in which Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah wrote. And he looks at Al Jawabu Ali al Iqtiradat al Misriya, which is which is re, re, which is really well known as Fatawa al Misriya, written by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. The person also looks at the Misbah of Valam and the Minhaj al Tasis. Both of them are written by Abdul Latif ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Hassan ibn Muhammad ibn Abdul Hab. The person looks at the Majmu' of Nawawi. And the Mughni by Ibn Qudamah al Maqdisi, rahimahullah. At this stage, the person looks at Sharh al Kawkab al Munir, written by Ibn Najjar, which is in Usul al Fiqh. He reads books of Al Mawsu'ah, books that are very vast and they speak in depth. They bring opposing opinions, they respond to it. This is where he, this is where he studies now. He's now at a point where he's not only looking and he's not comparing only. He's actually strengthening one opinion over the other. He has the ability to what? To dismiss an opinion and to give priority to another opinion. This is called Marhala to Tahrir. In which the student of knowledge he chooses when it comes to the different opinions. Uh, which one is stronger? He can bring the 
he can look at the doubt and he can respond to it. He's reached that level. And he's looking at the Masailul Khilafiyyah, matters which are differed upon. This, brothers, is what is known as Al Bahthul Wasa. The person does a deep research in issues, whether it be Masail al Ilmiyyah, Al Aqadiyyah, whether it be Fiqhiyyah related, whether it be Usuliyyah related, other issues. He can get to the bottom of the every issue. He can reach Al Usul ila Al Haqi wa Sawab. He can get to the bottom of what is right and what is correct, from what is wrong, and what is falsehood. There's a fifth stage that a person needs to look into. A fifth stage a person needs to go towards. After they've done these four stages, there's a fifth stage that a person needs to do. This fifth stage is Marhalatu Takhassus. Marhalatu Takhassus means, it's very important, my beloved brothers and sisters, after the person has done, after the person has studied, has done all those four marahil, they've studied all the sciences. Any subject that you talk to them about, they have understanding of it. And they're very strong in every subject. But we can't specialize in every subject. You can't. You can't get to the bottom of every subject. It's impossible. So what does a person do? This marhala, which is marhala to takhassus, the person, he specializes. This is, the speci this is where you specialize. The person is specializing in a particular subject. He knows all the other subjects. He understands all of the other subjects. He's taken an advanced level of all of the subjects. But this one particular subject, or an, uh, he's going to go deep into this subject. He's going to go in deep with this subject. He's going to do tabahur. He's going to do tabahur. He's going to go too deep into this subject. He's going to read books that are coming out, contemporary books. He's going to go and look for manuscripts. He's going to go out of his way to uh, author works in this. This is takhassus. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الشَّافِعِيُّ said, مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ عِلْمًا Shafi'i said, anyone who learns a knowledge, فَلْيُدَقِّقْ فِيهِ Let him go deep, deep into that subject. لِأَلَّا يُضَيَّعَ دَقِيقَ الْعِلْمِ so he doesn't forsake the detailed knowledge. Uh, so Shafi'i is saying this to you. Anyone who studies and learns, let him go deep into something. Let him go deep into it. So he doesn't forsake daqiqul ilmi. That you don't forsake the detailed knowledge. Many people don't like detailed knowledge. They don't like detailed information. They like it to be it's too much information. Was that really necessary, that information? Shafi'i rahimahullah opposes that. He says, Man ilman. Anyone who learns a knowledge, فَلْيُدَقِّقْ فِيهِ Go deep into it. Ah. لِأَلَّا يُضَيَّعَ So he doesn't forsake دَقِيقَ الْعِلْمِ And Imam Bayhaqi brings that in his Al-Madkhal uh, إِلَى السُنَنِ الْكُبْرَى Ibn Qutayba said something very powerful as well. Ibn Qutayba in his kitab, عُيُونُ Akbar. He said, كان يقال it used to be said إذا أردت أن تكون عالما فقصد لفن من العلم that if you want to be a scholar if you really want to be a scholar then go and intend a particular subject go to a particular subject and intend that particular subject ah this is كتخصص specialize basically in one subject that's if you want to become a scholar وإذا أردت أن تكون أديبا but if what you want to be is a adib, a person who, uh, adib is a person who reads everything. An adib, it's a person who just loves reading. Uh, he just reads everything. فَخُذْ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ أَحْسَنَةٍ Then take from everything the good that you see in it. So a person who reads all of the subjects and reads everything, and the scholars, they call that person adib. He reads usul al-fiqh, he reads nahaw, he reads... But there's not one subject he's daqiqat. There's not one subject that you'd say, subhanAllah, this is his field. He's mudaqiq in this field. Because, brothers, al-umru qasir, time is, our life is very short. And the knowledge of the religion is excessively long. Okay, it's very, too much. You won't be able to do tawassu in all of the funun, like Shaykh al-Islam, Taymiyyah and others. To get to that level of all of the subjects, you've done tawassu in it. That you've done takhassus in every 
particular subject, that's, that's hard for somebody to do. So what do you do? You do those four, four marahil that I mentioned for you. The four levels, and then you choose one subject that you like. Whether it be hadith, whether it be fiqh, whether it be aqeedah. There's a subject that you, there's a subject that you love, you go deep into that subject. وَلِذَلِكَ أَبْ عُبَيْدْ قَاسِمْ بْنُ السَّلَامِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ He said, مَا نَاظَرَنِي رَجُلٌ أَبْ عُبَيْدْ قَاسِمْ بْنُ السَّلَامِ He said, مَا نَاظَرَنِي رَجُلٌ No man has ever debated me. قَطٌ وَكَانَ مُفَنَّنْ مُفَنِّنًا وَكَانَ مُفَنِّنًا No man ever debated me who studied so many subjects. No man has ever debated me who's actually studied so many subjects. He studied all of the fulun and he hasn't really specialized in any of them. He studied them equally. No man like that has debated me. Fi ulubin illa ghalabtu, except I overcome him in the debate. I win. You see, wala nadarani rajulun. And no man has debated me. Dhu fannin wahid, who specializes in one subject, who only knows one subject, mastered one subject, illa ghalabani fi ilmihi dhalik. Except that he overcomes me in that science. He beats me. Because he made this subject his whole life. He made it his whole life. So, I don't want you to understand from my statement here, that you forsake the other subjects and the other sciences. No, we already spoke about that. Every single subject that you study, and it goes through those three four stages. But the fifth stage is from those subjects, Allah is always going to give you one subject that you truly love and you have passion for and you, and you admire. There's definitely going to be like, you might like Quran and Qiraat, you might love Hadith, Tasheeh and Tadaif, weakening and authenticating a Hadith. That whenever you hear scholars say Daif, you're always interested in knowing why, who's in the chain, what happened here. Or somebody just loves grammar, Allah has made them love this science. They should do Tachasus in that field that they love and go deep into that science and master that science more than any other science. Ibn Jama'a rahimahullah he said, He said, Rahimahullah, وَإِذَا أَكْمَلْتَ أَهْلِيَتَهُ وَظَهَرَتْ فَضِيلَتَهُ وَمَرَّ عَلَيْهِ عَلَىٰ أَكْثَرِ كُتُبِ الْفَنِّ أَوِ الْمَشْهُورَ مِنْهَا بَحْثًا وَمُرَاجَعًا وَمُطَالَعًا إِشْتَغَلَ بِالتَّصْنِيفِ Because this is Tachassus now. What the person does is that when they've done those four stages and they've picked a particular subject that they love and they went deep into that subject. Now, and only now, he said, Ibn Jama'a, does the person have the writes and should the person go towards what authorship the person should start thinking about writing in that particular subject maybe say a word or two in that particular subject put something together construct something because when you go var when you go too deep into a particular subject you realize that there's something that wasn't spoken about that you might think mm, it needs to be spoken about something might be might be need to be said about this particular issue brothers when the person authors and the person writes and the person goes through these five stages, it's very necessary ya ikhwa, that the person has ishraf ilmi. There are supervisors that are looking over you. Before we kept mentioning that they are what? A shaykh mutqin, a, a shaykh who's mastered this. If he's looking over you, that's good. That's the classic way of doing it. That is the what? That is the classic way of doing it. But there are also organizations, muassasat ilmiya, like universities, and kulliyat, faculties, ma'ahid, institutes, and etc., who also can play this role if they do it correctly. If they set themselves a strong syllabus and a strong curriculum where they do these marahil and they follow these stages, it makes a student go through one stage after the other, practically learning and studying and see himself advance and grow. And as I said, brothers, these are the stages that you need to take. But are the humans the same? No. Nah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes one person different from another person. People are different in what? Quwwatul hifdi. In the strength of memorization, the people are not the same. Wa madal fahm. And the people's understanding are what? And the people's understanding are also not the same. People's understanding are different. And the time that everybody exerts in studying are also different. A person might choose five hours and another person might choose two hours a day. One might choose his ten hours and another might choose five hours. They differ in the effort that each person puts in. 
So if you see yourself doing these stages, but you're not seeing as much, then maybe it might go back towards not these stages. It might go back to you as an individual. Maybe you're not exerting enough uh, time into it. Maybe you're not, you're not memorizing what you should memorize. And we're going to speak about what you should memorize and what you shouldn't memorize. Those five stages that I mentioned, brothers and sisters, they have one thing in common. And I want you to put all of those five under one heading, which is Those five stages were the stages, those five that we mentioned, those five stages, is called knowing knowing how to gradually uh, how to gradually um, attain knowledge okay brothers those are the five stages because brothers and sisters in order to gain knowledge there's two things that you need to come with the first one is knowing first how to go gradually in seeking knowledge and we've spoken about that right You've all come to understand that now, sah? We've learned the five stages that you need to go to, through. There's a second thing that you need, brothers. There's a second thing that you need in order to practically gain knowledge. And that is ma'rifatun knowing. Maratibun nadar fi kulli mas'alati min masail al-ilm. The second thing that you need to come with. The first one was what? Knowing how to gradually. How to what? How to gradually move from one stage to another. What book each stage that I need to take. Okay? The second one is, brothers and sisters, is ma'rifatun knowing maratibun nadar. Knowing the levels of how to observe each matter. A mas'ala is going to come to you. A particular issue is going to come to you. Okay? This particular mas'ala, how do I personally observe this issue? How do I look at it? Mathalan, a woman, a woman, can she get married without the permission of her wali? A person wants to go out and wants to research this issue. He wants to get to the bottom of this particular issue. This is a mas'ala that came to him. It's a particular issue that came to him. How does he personally observe this particular issue? How does he look at this issue? How does he break it down? And how does he get to a correct conclusion without getting it wrong? Okay? This is after the person has reached the level of researching and looking into issues. Are we all together, brothers? So now we're going to move on to um, the maratib. Okay, levels of another of kulli mas'ala min masail al-ilmi. As we said before, these practical steps that we're giving you, brothers and sisters, is what makes you a strong student of knowledge. It gives you fahm which is sahih and tasawwur which is daqiq, a good, strong understanding, and it also gives you a correct perception. The f there's five stages in this one as well. Five stages that you need to take when you want to look at a particular mas'ala. You want to look at a particular issue at hand. There are five stages that you need to take. The first one is tasawwurul mas'ala. First of all, try to understand the issue. What is it that we're talking about? Tasawwurul mas'ala. Perception of the issue. Tasawwuran sahihan. A correct perception. Try to understand what this issue means, first of all. The definition of it. The reality pertaining to it. Try to understand its reality. This is very important. That's the job of a shaykh. The job of the shaykh is that he gives you the rights to know what each things mean. Wallahi, brothers, you can't talk about a matter you haven't understood. They have a principle, which is to place a ruling on something, it first of all stems from a correct perception. Okay? You went to Saudi Arabia, you met a Shaykh, for example, and you said to the Shaykh, Shaykh, what does a dope mean? Huh? 
He said, what does dope mean? Sheikh is going to look at you and say, I've never heard of the word dope. Huh? Yeah? He's going to ask you, give me its reality. What is it? What does it do to you? You say, yeah, Sheikh, dope means, it's weed, right? Huh? It's dope weed. Huh? It's weed and marijuana. So the Sheikh is going to look at you and say to you, okay, what does it do to you? You will say, Sheikh, it intoxicates the mind. Okay, point number one. Good. When you describe it to the Sheikh and you give him the reality of what this thing is, then he gives you the ruling. So without him perceiving this issue and understanding its reality, he can't give you a ruling. He can't. He needs to know what the word means. What is its reality? What does it do to you? Is that every mas'ala, every issue that you're looking at, first of all, have a correct perception of it. Understand what it means. For example, these are, I'm just going to now give you a lot of examples to show you this. Like for example, um, what does it mean when the fuqaha say al ma al mustamal used water? What do they mean by used water? You hear some of the fuqaha say, Jazakallah khairan. You hear the scholars say, al ma al mustamal tahir ghayr mutahir. That the water that is used, it purifies you and it's pure in and within itself. The water that's used. Right? Water that is used purifies you and it's pure in and within itself. Okay, what is pure water? What is used water then? Does used water mean the water that pours from your limbs? What's coming down from your limbs? and dripping from you, is that what's meant by used water? Or is used water, after you finished using the wudu that you were using, whatever's left over, that's the used water. What's the used water? Are we together? So when the scholars, they say, al ma'al musta'mal, used water. Are they talking about the water that drops from you, that goes off your body part, that's dripping from you? Can somebody use it from the bottom? Is that what they mean? Or do they mean the water that's left in the bucket after you've used it, you've not put your hand in it. You've just used it from the side, you've done your wudu with it, that's used water. Is that used water to them? Or is it what's dripping from your body parts? If you've not understood which of those two it is, then what you give as a ruling will be incorrect. The ruling that you pass is going to be incorrect. That's very important. For example, the scholars, they say, the fuqaha, for example, they say, The fuqaha, they say, the tayammum, the tayammum. Tayammum, you know what it is, right? Tayammum is when you can't find water, what you use? The dust and whatever you use. They say that the tayammum permits, it doesn't uplift. Tayammum, it permits, but it doesn't uplift. What do they mean by it permits and it doesn't uplift? What is meant by ilaha here? And in what is meant by rafi' here? Ama al rafa. The person needs to look into that. Because if you don't understand what this means and you haven't proper understood it, then your ruling is going to be wrong. The ruling that you give is going to be what? Is going to be wrong. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in a hadith, Ma min al The animal that is cut. Um, what is cut from the animal? Min al bahima, wa hiya whilst it's alive, fahiya maytah. Then this animal is a dead animal. The ruling it takes is the ruling of a dead corpse. You can't eat a dead animal. So if a person goes and he cuts a body part of an animal, okay, then this part that you've cut off, and the animal and all of them, they take the a ruling of a what? A dead corpse, of a corpse that you're eating. The question here is, ma qutia, that which has been cut from the animal. What does that actually mean? What is actually meant by what is cut from the animal? Okay, what does the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam? For example, if a person sends a, uh, he sends a arrow towards a animal in which he's hunting. And then what happens when he throws the arrow, he says, Bismillah. And he hits the arrow, hits the animal. 
and then the animal moves for a, for a little bit. It moves for a little bit. So you shot a gun, the leg went off, the animal moved for a little bit after that, tried to run. Then it fell on the ground, dead. Whatever cut off, that you shot off the animal, before it died, is it considered dead or is it not considered dead? This goes back to understanding the reality of what is what is ma qutia, what is being cut from the animal. If you don't have the understanding of that, then the ruling that you give is going to be wrong. Also, for example, let's look at aqidah related issues. The scholars they say, for instance, Ahl Sunnah say, Inna min usuli Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a isbat al Sifat ala zahiri. Ahl Sunnah say that from the fundamental beliefs of ours is that we affirm Allah's characteristics based on its apparent. The question here is, ma ma'ana zahir? What is meant by zahir? When Ahl Sunnah say zahir, according to the apparent, what do they mean by the apparent? When Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah they say, مثلا, when they say, sifat, sifatullah, Allah's characteristics, ala al-haqiqah, it's in its real meaning. لا على المجاز It's not metaphorical. What do they actually mean by that? What do they mean? What is حقيقة? What is مجاز? What is ظاهر? And etc. What do they when they say ظاهر and when they say حقيقة? What's the difference between the two? What's the difference between ظاهر and حقيقة? Because when they say إن من أصولها لسنة والجماعة إثبات الصفات على ظاهرها and here they say Sifatullahi ala al haqiqati la ala al bajaz. So when they affirmed it ala zahir and they made it zahir and when they made it haqiqa, what's the difference? What's the fark between the two? Very important. Usuliyin. When they say amun, this is general. Illa ma akhassahu al dalil. Amun. Illa ma akhassahu al dalil. And when they say Amun Mahsusu, what's the difference? Amun Illa Ma Khasahu Dalil. And Amun Mahsusu, what does it mean? Are we all together? You have to understand all of that. What's the difference between Mutlaq and Am? What's the difference between Mutlaq and the scholars they say this is Mutlaq, the Usuliyin? And when they say this is what? It's Am. You need to know the difference. This, brothers, is what? This that I mentioned here right now is, um, is having that perception. If you can't answer the definition, you can't give it the reality, then what you take after that is all wrong. Ah. If a person reads that hadith and he says, Ma qutia min al bahima, wa hiya hayyat, fa hiya mayta, we say to him, Good. Ma ma'ana ma qutia. If he doesn't know what it really means and he can't answer it, then he has not got the first stage of speaking about a particular issue, which is tasawwur. He hasn't got a correct perception of it. His perception is wrong. Are we all together? He hasn't got a correct perception. For example, the kuffar are categorized into how much? The kuffar are categorized into four types. The first one is kafir, which is dhimmi. Another one is muahid. Another one is mustamin. And another one is Muharib. The scholars they say this is kafir, which is harbi. Harbi means what? A kafir in which you are in a war with. Sah? What do they mean by kafir, which is harbi? What do they actually mean by kafir harbi? The ulama, when they say that. Do they actually mean that the kafir in you are in direct battle right now and you're fighting? Or do they mean it's a kafir that's not any of the past three? If he doesn't have a contract with you, if he's not in an agreement with you, if nobody's given him a, 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 a uh, nobody's given him a shelter into the Muslim land, none of that has been done. What does it actually mean? This is kafir, this is harbi. What do they mean by that? What do the scholars mean by that? All of these are tasawwur that the person needs to have. A perception that the people needs to have. If the person doesn't have this perception, then what they say after that is all incorrect. It's all incorrect. And the scholars, they speak about that in their works. So first stage was what, brothers and sisters? Tasawwurul mas'ala. Perceiving the matter. 
tasawwuran sahihan, a correct perception. Then the person moves on to the second level. When you're looking at each issue, you do the second. The second one is ma'arifatul hukmi, learning the ruling pertaining to this issue now. Learning the issue pertaining to this issue, ruling pertaining to this issue. The second level is ma hukmu. Are we all together? This, by the way, brothers and sisters, is how you even write a research. What do you do a research? You give the definition of each thing. You also talk about its reality and, what it, and the, you give a good perception of it first as an, in, as an introduction. And then you go into the hukum, the ruling. Are we all together? Yeah, brothers and sisters. Are we all together? The second one is ma'rifatul hukmi, knowing the ruling of this issue. Now you've understood what ma'al musta'mal means. You know what it means now. You know what it means. You've understood it. You have the reality in your head. What the scholars actually mean by al-ma'al musta'mal. The question to you now is what's its ruling then? Based on what you've learned and the understanding of the fuqaha and what they mean by it. What's the ruling on it? Then you say the ruling is what? Ma'al musta'mal. It's tahirun. غير مطهر آه. if you want to follow the قول الشافعية أما طاهر مطهر we spoke about that more in details in where in متن أبي شجاع but the person gives it its ruling here that water is pure in and within itself and it purifies آه. are we all together does that make sense brothers for example um what is a kafir harbi? The person learned the definition of what a kafir harbi is. A kafir which you're in a, uh, I'm a kafir which is harbiyun. What is it? The scholars they say, after you've understood its reality and what it really means, then the scholars they say that he's halalud dam. You can fight with him. His blood is permissible. The scholars they, uh, they give that ruling for instance. And etc. That's after you've understood its reality. We've agreed on what it really means. The ruling is now something that we can discuss. But if the perception is wrong, the ruling is going to be wrong. And as I said before, al hukmu ala shay far'un an tasawuri. A ruling on something stems from a correct perception. <coughs> then the person moves on to the third. The third point that they move on to when they're looking at that particular issue, which is ma'rifa to adillat al ahkam. The person learns. He learns the evidences pertaining to this. What's the ruling? He mentioned already. But what's your evidence for this ruling? Are we all together? So if the person takes, for example, if the person takes um, that the ma'al musta'mal, the used water, if he takes that the used water, and he gave a, a correct, the perception he believes is, is what he mentioned. Are we all together? He, he knew, he understood the reality of it. And his ruling was what? His ruling is that it's tahir in and within itself and it doesn't, and it doesn't purify you. And he takes that opinion according to the Shafi'iyah and others. Then he's going to bring the hadith of what? Maymunah, right? The hadith of Maymunah is going to be his evidence, which is like the Shafi'iyah would do. Which is that she said, Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the Prophet prohibited and to tax and to the Tassil al Mara be fatherly Rajuli. Oh, you have Tassil al Rajuli be fatherly al Mara while you have Tarifa Jamia. That the Prophet prohibited alayhi salatu wa sallam that the man he showers from or does ghusl from from the father of a woman, a place, a woman's pot. And the woman does it from the man's one. Because it's Ma'al Mustamal Shafi'i say, it's a used water. Both of them should take from it. They should take from it. They couldn't, they can't. And then the point here is that this is the evidence for this person. So he knows, he gave a perception that he has of it. His ruling is what he said. And then his evidence is that. That's the third level that the person takes. The fourth level. The fourth level is very important, which is Ma'rifa knowing al jawami the things that these uh, matters have in sh knowing what issues have in common and their differences as well. This is very important, brothers. You have to know jawami and fawariq bayn al masail. 
What do they have in common? If you don't know what things have in common, you have a problem. Are we all together? For example, wiping over your hair. Sorry, wiping, sorry, not over your hair. Wiping over the khufayn, the socks. Are we all together? And wiping over a calf that's been put on your hand. Is it a calf, right? A calf that's put on your hand. What do they have in what do they have in common? And are they the same ruling? And there are there differences between the two of them? Are we all together? Do you give it exactly the same ruling of wiping over your socks? That if a cast was put on your hand, you broke your hand, and they put a cast in your hand. Do they take the same? Are there jawamir that they have in common? Are there fawariq that they're different in? Very important. That you look for what they have in common, you look for what they're different in. وَلِذَلِكَ الشَّيْخَ عَبْدُ اللَّطِيفِ Ibn Abdul Rahman, Ibn Hassan, Ibn Muhammad Abdul Hab. He said, I'lam know anna man tasawwara haqiqata ayya shay. Anybody who comes to know the reality of any issue, it doesn't matter, ala ma huwa alayhi fil kharij. And he comes to know this issue as it is in the outer. Wa arafa ma hiyata. And he comes to know its true essence. Bi awsafiha al khasa, its specific descriptions. Or bijahli kila al mahiyatayni. Or ignorant. Wa arafa mahiyatu bi awsafiha al khasa. Sorry, naam. Wa arafa mahiyata, he knows its essence. Bi awsafiha al khasa in its specific type of description. Arafa darura tama yunakidu wa yubadu. Then the person will by default learn from that the reality of the things that will oppose it by necessity. He will know that. If you know something as it really is, you have a correct perception of it. You, as we said at the beginning, you have a good understanding of what it really is. Automatically, you know what opposes it. Automatically, you know what opposes it. Look what he said after that. He said, But ambiguity will come بِلَبْسِ إِحْدَ الْحَقِيقَتَيْنِ When somebody is what? When it's hidden from somebody, one of the two realities. One of the two realities are hidden from you. أَوْ بِجَهْلِ كِلَ الْمَهِيَتَيْنِ Or one of the two essences are missing from you, which is the جَوَامِعْ or the فَوَارِقْ وَمَعَ إِنْتِفَاءِ ذَلِكَ وَحُصُولِ التَّصَوُّرِ التَّامِ لَهُمَا لَا يَخْفَى وَلَا يَلْتَبِسْ أَحَدُهُمَا بِالْآخَرِ نعم Sorry, sorry. When he says, وَإِنَّمَا يَقَعُ الْخَفَاءُ بِنَبْسِ إِحْدَ الْحَقِيقَتَيْنِ He means, أي حقيقة الشيء أن حقيقة على ما هو عليه في الخارج Knowing what the thing is in its essence and know what it, knowing what it is outside externally. Mm -hmm. نعم. And when the scholars, they wrote books on this. For example, عبد الرحمن ناصر السعودي, he wrote a book that teaches you things that have things in common and whatever are differences. He wrote a book for it. And he called it Al-Qawaid Wal-Usul Al-Jami'ah Wal-Taqasim Al-Badi'ah Al-Nafi'ah And he says in that book Ma'rifatu Jawami' Al-Ahkami Wa Fawariqiha Min Al-Ahami Al-Ulumi Wa Akhtariha Fa'idah Wa A'zamiha Naf'ah He said knowing Rulings of things that have, knowing the ruling of a matter and what they have in common and their differences, he says it's from the greatest and the most important sciences, the most beneficial things that a person needs to know. The person learns a lot. For example, if a person, he prays in a thobe that's made out of harir, it's made out of silk. Batalat salatuhu. His salah is batil. But if he prays a salah where he's wearing a imam that's made out of silk, lam tabtul salatuhu. His salah is not nullified. What's the difference between the two? The majnoon, the crazy one, 
Is zakat obligatory on him? Naam. Tajib alayhi zakat. Lakin la tajib alayhi salah. The crazy one, the insane one, zakat is obligatory on him. Zakat has to be paid from his money. But he doesn't have to pay salah. So is a salah more important than zakat? What's the difference? Why? What's the reason to that? Um, if a man prevents himself from his wife, he says to his wife that you are haram from me. This is called a, it's called a dhihar. That's what's called a dhihar. And if a man prohibits himself from his slave, it's a yameen. It's not dhihar. It's a yameen. What's the difference between the two? He said the same thing in this situation and then out. Anyone who prays without a tahara, out of forgetfulness, he has to repeat the prayer. And anybody who prays and on his clothes there's impurity, out of forgetfulness, he doesn't repeat the prayer. Anybody who prays the salah with no tahara, he doesn't have tahara. He would, and he finds out later, he would have to repeat the prayer. But if a person prays a salah knowing that on their clothes there's impurity on it, and they forgot it, and they remember later, they don't have to repeat that prayer. Why are they two different things? They're both impurity. What's the difference from that, that, this situation to that situation? This is knowing the jawabi' and the fawariq. You're knowing the differences and you're also learning um, uh, what do you call it uh, and what they have in common. We have a lot more to go through but because we took a lot of information today we'll stop there inshallah ta'ala. I'll leave bi-idhnillah al kareem the rest for Mm-hmm. Now let's do the fifth one, at least the fifth one, sah? Yeah? yeah? Let's do the fifth one. Mm -hmm. The fifth one is Ma'rifatu Maratib al Masail. The fourth sorry, the fifth one is when you're looking at each masala is Ma'rifatu knowing Maratib al Masail. Knowing what? Maratib al Masail. What does it mean knowing Maratib al Masail? Knowing the levels of issues have to. The fifth stage is knowing the levels of matters. What do we mean by that? As you know, Allah Taala commands us and as you know Allah prohibits us. The religion is what? Ma'murat and manhiyat. Sahih. Allah's commands and what? Prohibitions. Are commands and prohibitions the same? Which one goes first? You have to know how to give presence to which one. Which one is greater and which is less? The ma'mur, the awamir, or the nawahi? The ma'murat are what? The ma'murat, wajib and the mustahab, right? <coughs> and the manhiyat, the prohibited things are what? What are they? It is the haram and the makruh. The ma'murat that are commanded, that you're commanded, because they encompass the wajibat and the mustahabbat, are they both the same? If they both, you have to choose one over the other. Are they both the same? And the tazahum, are they both the same? Is the wajib, which is a command, and the sunnah, which is a command but not in a forceful manner, okay? Is it the same as a wajib? Knowing the levels of things are very important when you're talking about mas'ala. How to give which present to which. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الشَّاطِبِيُّ He says in his Kitab Al-Muwafaqat, he says, فَالْأَوَامِرُ وَالنَّوَاهِ مِنْ جِهَةِ اللَّفْءِ عَلَى تَسَاوٍ فِي دَلَالَةِ الْإِخْتِضَاءِ وَالتَّفْرِقَةِ بَيْنَ مَا هُوَ مِنْهَا أَمْرٌ وُجُوبٌ أَوْ نَدْمٌ وَمَا هُوَ نَهْيُ تَحْرِيمٍ أَوْ كَرَاهَ لا تعلم من النصوص وإن علم منها بعض فالأكثر منها غير معلوم وما حصل لنا الفرق 
بينها إلا باتباع المعاني والنظر إلى المصالح وفي أي مرتبة تقع وبالاستقراء المعنوي ولم نستند فيه لمجرد الصيغة وإلا لازم في الأمر أن لا يكون في الشريعة إلا على, قس قس على قسم واحد لا على أقسام متعددة والنهي كذلك أيضا Shatibi here tells us, rahimahullah, that the awamir, the commands and the prohibitions are not of one level. Na'am, min jihatil lafzi, in terms of the wordings, they all come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amma min jihatil ma'na, as in terms of its meanings, and what they benefit us, they're not the same. And they're not the same, they're different levels. And a talib ilm, brothers, he needs to know the maratibul ma'murat, and the manhiyat, he needs to know them. So he can give precedence to what? الذي يقدم أو يؤخر عند التزاحم. that he knows this is not the كلام الشاطبي by the way. that the person knows that when there is تزاحم there's they are over crowding each other. you know which one to choose. like for example تقديم الفرض على النفل. you give precedence to that which is obligatory over that which is voluntary. for example the أحناف what do you see them do? They come into the masjid and they pray the sunnatay fajr whilst the jama'ah is going on. Sahih. Fajr is being prayed. The ahnaf would be praying the sunnah in the back. <coughs> Sahih brothers? Have you seen that? Yeah? That's what they do. They pray. So here we have a problem with taqdeem al-fardi ala nafli But they, they, they believe that's obligatory by the way. But we'll go into that itself as well, with the Nilayl Kareem. When the jihad is jihad, fardu ayn, the jihad is individual obligation. That goes, it takes precedence over the birul walidayn. For example, hajj, which is wajib, takes precedence over the ta'atul walidayn, etc. If the man has only enough money to give to the children or the mother, which one does it go to? Taqdeem al-zawja. Ala al-awlaad. It goes towards the wife over the children. Are you with me, brothers? These are all in the tazahum. When things have to be... Tazahum happens. Um, the zina of the neighbor is greater than the zina of a, a person from another city. And etc. All of these are manhiyat, prohibition, but they're not ala watiratin wahida. It's not all of one level. These five levels, if a person attains it, a student of knowledge attains it, then truly has attained a lot of good. Inshallah ta'ala, bi'idhnillahi al-kareem, next week we'll be forced to go through more points, bi'idhnillahi al-kareem, on Saturday and Sunday again. And maybe the week after that we'll choose another a, uh, another uh, 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 series بإذن but I think we haven't finished this one uh, we need some more things to say about it anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh